In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the reduce method of a JavaScript array. The video was inspired by a blog post by Colin Toe at the URL shown here. So what does the reduce method do? According to the documentation, the reduce method applies a function against an accumulator and each value of the array from left to right has to reduce it to a single value. Okay, so we need to know what an accumulator is. The easiest way to understand what an accumulator is is to compare it to a counter. A counter holds a value that continually changes in the same way. For example, by repeatedly adding one to it. An accumulator holds a value that continually changes in a different way. For example, by adding a series of values to it one at a time. That series of values might be stored in an array. To illustrate, let's look at these two functions. The count function takes two arguments, increment, the value to increment by, and iterations, the number of times to increment. So if we call count, passing it 1 and 10, it adds 1 to sum 10 times, giving a result of 10. The accumulate function takes just one argument, an array. It accumulates the values by looping through the array, adding each value to the sum. So if we call accumulate, passing in an array that contains five values, one, two, three, four, and five, it first adds one to sum, then adds two, then adds three, then four, and then five, resulting in 15. We can use reduce instead of our accumulate function like this. Reduce takes one required argument, a callback function, to call on each element of the array, and an optional initial value. The callback function takes up to four arguments, previous value, the value that has been accumulated thus far, current value, the value of the current element of the array in this iteration, index, the index of the current element of the array, and array, the original array on which reduce was called. We don't need the index or array arguments in the callback function to simulate our accumulate function. We just need previous value and current value, which we've renamed prev and next. When we run this, it returns 15. It gets that by adding 1 to 0 to get 1, and then 2 to that to get 3, and then 3 to that to get 6, and then 4 to that to get 10, and then 5 to that to get 15. This next code snippet actually shows those steps by logging each one to the console. This time, we're also making use of the index. When we run it, we see the results in the console. The first iteration, where index is 0, prev will contain 0, because that's what we passed it for the initial value and next will contain 1. The second time through, prev will contain 1 and next will contain 2, so prev plus equals next will return 3. The third time through, prev will equal 3 and next will also equal 3, so prev plus equals next will return 6. The fourth time through, we add 4 to that, so prev equals 10, and the last time through, we add 5, so prev equals 15. If we don't pass in the initial value, reduce will skip the first index and jump right to index 1, in which prev is the first element of the array and next is the second element. So I hope that makes it clear how reduce works, but when would you ever use it? Colin came up with a good use case scenario. Imagine you have an array of strings and you want to know how often each string shows up. In his blog article, Colin first shows how you would do this the old way. First we start with an array apple orange, apple orange, pear orange, and in a get word count function we instantiate an empty object, obj. Then we loop through the array with a for loop. Each time through the array we create a variable, item, to hold the string element in the array. Then we use that item string as the key for a value and either add one to it if it already exists in our object or assign it one. So for example, the first time through obj apple will get one. The third time through when we find apple again, we will add one to obj apple, making it two. When we run it, we see that there are two apples, three oranges, and one pear. Note that we could have used the for each method of the array instead of a for loop. If you're not familiar with that one, Colin shows how to use it in the same blog post. Okay, then Colin shows us how to do the same thing using reduce. We call the reduce method and pass it two arguments, the callback function and the initial value, which is an empty object. The first iteration, prev is the initial value, that is, it is the empty object. And next is the first element of the array, apple, which serves as a key for our object. Although the object isn't named, 
you can think of it as obj apple. And obj apple gets assigned its current value plus one, or if it has no current value, just one. It returns prev, which now has one property, apple. And the next time through, it assigns the object an orange property, also with a value of one. The result, the same as we saw before. It's a little easier to see if we log prev on each iteration. After the first time through, our object has one property, apple, with a value of one. After the second time through, it has two properties, apple and orange, each with a value of one. After the third time through, it still has two properties, but this time, apple has a value of two, and so on. So I hope you now understand how Reduce works and have a good use case scenario for using it. Thanks to Colin for the inspiration for this video. Check out his blog at the URL shown here for other web development articles.